In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made this moody black and white image out of this raw file. Hello and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today is going to be about a black and white edit. Uh, now this is from a, uh, a shoot I did yesterday. I just happened to be visiting these amazing horsehead statues called the Kelpies uh, in Falkirk in Scotland. It's about probably half an hour drive from my new home in Edinburgh. Um, I didn't take any uh, B-roll footage to do a, a shoot on, out on location. Um, so I'm basically just taking through the edit, but I thought I'd give you a little bit of um, info on how I took this uh, shot. Um, there are a, a few I'm going to be um, working from, but it is this one, this vertical shot of the horse's head in particular that um, that I'm going to be uh, I'm going to mostly be working on because it's it's definitely my favorite of the bunch. Um, uh, this was a 20 second long exposure. Now, obviously, in the middle of the day, uh, that's a very long time to keep your shutter open. Normally, that would be hugely um, over exposed. Um, so if you've never done long exposure sh uh, shooting in the daytime before, uh, then one of the things that you will need is uh, is this guy. It's uh, called the Big Stopper. It's basically, it's um, it's a neutral density filter. Uh, the ones I use are by Lee Filters um, and uh, they are great. They are basically these very, very uh, dark bits of square glass that goes in front of your lens. It very it restricts hugely the amount of light coming into your camera. That's what lets you do these very very long exposures um, in the middle of the day, and that's how you get that nice effect of the clouds streaking overhead. Um, that's something that I uh, an effect that I knew that I really wanted as soon as I saw these horses' heads because of course they are statues of living creatures which would normally be moving but um obviously they are they are static and and i really like having that contrast between a, a static object be it a sculpture like this or a building or rock formation or something in, in nature but showing that movement by using those long exposures whether it's clouds moving in the background whether it's water that's been smoothed out so you can see that motion blur or maybe even people or traffic going past is another is another really uh, nice way of doing it um, using maybe shorter exposures um, even with the 10 stop nd I had to use an, exp uh, uh, an aperture of f18, uh, so very very narrow um, hole for the light to, to again to restrict that light coming through. Um, but uh, yeah, it, I think it's come out really well. Um, I could have gone for a little bit uh, of a longer exposure, but it was uh, very very windy, um, and I was kind of concerned about getting a blurry image basically but um yeah I, I think it was it was nice and i'm definitely looking forward to going back there with some other bits of kit and maybe even a wider angle lens and try some different compositions uh and maybe try and go for like a nice bit of sunset light so uh, i'm probably going to return to these but uh let's dive into the edit okay so here we are over in lightroom now and there are these three images that i'm probably going to uh take a look at but as i say it's definitely this portrait uh, orientation shot of this horse that particularly stood out to me um, mostly because I just really like this below angle um, and the fact that the horse's head just sort of rises out of the concrete I think it's particularly dramatic um, I like that we've got the motion blur on the uh, on the actual water in the little lake down here and we have still got plenty of motion from the clouds uh, in the sky up here. It's a little bit too zoomed in, but there we go. Uh, yeah, so I like this shot. And um, if, as you can see up here in the metadata, that's 20 seconds, F18, ISO 100. Always keep your ISO over low as possible if you're doing these sorts of shots. A, it allows you to get a longer exposure because your um, ISO is, is lower and therefore darker, uh, but also it maintains the quality. If you try doing uh, this sort of shot with ISO 1000, there'd be a lot of extra image noise in there that you don't want. Obviously, first things first, move over to the develop module in Lightroom. Uh, and the first thing we can do is, of course, turn this into black and white. And there you go, then we're done. Thanks for joining us. No, I kid, of course, we're going to do a little bit more to this first. Um, and it hides that information. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, leave the, con uh, the exposure and the contrast both where they are, but I'm going to slightly bring down the highlights on this because it's a little bit overblown in the clouds in the background. 
as you can see, do a little bit of that. It is affecting the horse's head a little bit, but that's okay because we're going to come back to that in a bit. The shadows I'm also going to bring down because I want this shot to be a very, very dark, moody, quite foreboding scene. And you get that in black and white by basically underexposing, by making this shot much darker. And obviously the subject is uh, being darkened as well, a little bit too much, but we've got various tricks that we're going to use to bring that back out. Uh, the whites I'm going to up just a little bit, not too much. If you start to go too much, it gets too contrasty and it gets a bit grungy. Um, we don't want that. So I think I'm going to leave that at about plus 15. Uh, the blacks I'm going to leave where they are. Um, so I'm also not going to do anything with texture clarity or dehaze. We could have a little play around with these, but actually the dehaze, you know what? Actually, I don't dislike that too much, but only very subtly. As soon as you start to push this further, you can see again, it gets very, very contrasty, very, very dark. So I'm going to leave this at, I think, maybe plus 15 for that as well. Crop-wise, I actually think we could probably do with straightening this up just a little bit, maybe around there. And I'm going to bring this crop in, sort of obeying the rule of thirds with this line of where the, uh, the, the, the pathway sort of crosses the frame here, a little bit where the, uh, the neck of the horse meets the head as well. So um, I think that's looking okay as a composition. A lot of where I do my black and white work though is in the color mix down here because obviously there isn't any color so you don't have hue saturation but you do have the lightness and as you move these up and down it's knowing what is still blue what was originally blue in this shot and you can lighten and darken that separately. Now that's great for a scene like this where we did have uh, if we just look at the before we did have a lot of blue in the sky um, with those clouds coming across it so by bringing down that blue we're darkening just the blue in the sky you don't want to overdo it if you go too far it just starts to look very weird and we get a lot of artifacts and um yeah all this other stuff going on and you get a little bit of this sort of outline fringe around the horse's head which um i don't want that's just a bit of a sign that it's been over processed but i do want to bring it down quite a bit just to get that dramatic effect so i think i'm going to bring it down to about minus 30. um and at this point you sort of it's worth having a play around with what's left in the other sliders because it depends on where that color is coming from. So you see these yellows, that's affecting uh, a lot of the ground and a little bit of the edge of the horse itself. I actually think bringing that up a little bit just helps it pop out, I think maybe about, actually, you know what? No, I think leaving it where it is is where I want it, maybe plus five-ish. And then orange, we do the same again. We go up and down. And again, I think leaving that up a little bit, plus 15. I don't think there's anything really in the red channel. Purples, a little bit in the sky, just that bit of magenta. We can lift that. Yeah, I think that's about it in the mix. If we just turn that little section on and off, it's not made a huge difference, but it has made that sky a little bit more moody, a little bit more dramatic, which is exactly what we want from this shot. Uh, detail, I'm going to just turn down the sharpening a little bit on Lightroom. Sometimes it goes a bit too far, but I am going to up just a touch that noise reduction, um, which I think is just going to help smooth out um, some of those artifacts in the clouds. Indeed, it has. It looks pretty nice. Um, there's not a lot else I'm going to turn on both the uh, lens corrections in Lightroom. It's worth doing. Uh, I'm not going to do anything with a with a uh, with a vignette right now. That's something I might come back to. But the one thing that I do want to do is I just want to bring in a graduated filter. Now, if we just press uh, this to turn this this on, you can see that it's just this red area that's going to be affected, as in only the pond. The reason I want to do that, I'm just going to reset everything to zero, is I want to lighten it up by quite a bit because there wasn't a lot of light falling on that on that pond and as a result it had basically fallen into complete blackness uh, and I definitely don't want that. So I'm raising the exposure up by quite a way in order to bring back some of that detail. Also going to up the clarity slightly just to help give a bit more punch of the, of the light and the shadow from the uh, horse's head itself. Contrast up just a little bit. And that should be about it. If we just go back, turn this on and off, you can see just what a difference that has made to that pond. I think the shot looks a lot better. The only thing I'm going to do is just add another small brush, uh, undoing everything there, 
but bringing down the highlights. I'm going to use a smaller size. I'm just going to paint that in on this edge of uh, this walkway because that's just got a little bit overblown from that exposure boost. But I can bring that back under control just like that. We don't want that too bright as it starts to draw the eye a little bit too much. Um, but that is pretty much everything that I want to do in Lightroom. Um, it's at this point where you could, uh, if you wanted, I did want to show you the other the other three shots, the other two shots rather. Um, an easy, really easy way of doing this if you want to get a similar look across your shots is just right click on that shot, develop settings, copy settings, and then uh, you can decide which ones you want to copy. Um, I would take off the local adjustments. Um, that would include the brushing that I just did and that graduated filter because that's going to be specific to this composition that isn't going to apply anywhere else. So I would, uh, un I would untick that. I'd press copy. And then you can select your other shots. Right click again, develop settings, and then you can go to paste settings. Uh, and then as you can see, that has pasted. Uh, I think it also pasted my crop. Yes, it had. Um, we shouldn't do that. We should leave the crop alone. Um, and it, it, it's given us a good base point to uh, to work from with this, with this shot. Uh, I would say, let's just go reset crop for this one. The exposure has changed slightly between each of these uh, shots, um, you know, the light shifts and maybe I use a slightly different shutter speed. Uh, so you would still want to make sure you're going in and double checking that um, uh, it isn't too dark. This one, for example, um, I don't think it's worked very well. I'd need to do quite a bit of work to bring the horse's head back in. Um, but uh, for now, we're just going to go back to this one. I'm going to go right click, edit in, Photoshop, and we'll take it over there takes forever on my computer apparently so i can just have some tea oh that's a really good tea really good tea well done me thanks me so here we are over in photoshop and our image is in place ready to go the first thing that i'm going to do as always is duplicate that background layer so we've got a base layer saved that we can always go back to non-destructively should we want to uh, and if we zoom in on this shot we can see that there is tons of detail so there's really not a lot that we need to to do in terms of uh, sharpening this i might do an extra little bit afterwards but for now it's fine fit on screen first thing i'm going to do go into our adjustments panel and i'm going to use a levels adjustment and i'm going to use this to try and add a little bit more overall boost to that drama add a little bit of extra contrast in there I'm moving down the middle slider a little bit and I'm bringing down the top one as well. As you can see, it's just darkening things down. It's it's crushing these black levels a little bit more. Uh, if we just flick that on and off, that's already making such a huge difference. It's really, really boosting um, everything that we want in this scene. Now, usually if I'm doing these sorts of edits in Photoshop, I'll probably go in and try a few different exposures, uh, exposures, adjustments rather, um, just to see what effects we can get. Because you don't know exactly when you look at a picture. You might have an idea in your mind of the general look you're going for, but you don't always know exactly the steps that you're going to take to get there. So it's a bit of a trial and error process, and you may find some different things along the way that you weren't necessarily expecting. Using the curves tool, for example, I actually do quite like pulling down these highlights and, and mid-tones just a little bit, because I want it to be quite a flat image. I don't want too many highlights popping out. So if we just turn that on and off. We can see that that is just bringing down those highlights, bringing down those uh, some of those uh, brighter exposures in line with the rest of the image, which I think looks quite nice. Um, but it might be a little bit too much. So I'm going to go into the opacity tool and I'm going to bring it down to just about 70%. So it's a little bit more of a subtle effect, which I think looks good. Most of the other adjustments are for color work or for adding various other effects and things like that. So it's probably not a lot else that I'd really want to do to this. But one of the main things that I wanted to bring this into Photoshop to do is to do some dodging and burning. Um, and that I'm going to do by adding a new empty layer. I'm going to go Edit, Fill and I want it to fill with 50% gray. And you click OK, and that just fills it with this big gray panel. But then you go to blending modes, and you change it to overlay, which just hides everything which is 50% gray, i.e. that layer. Now, I have shown this before, the way I do my dodging and burning. But basically, once you've got your 50% uh, your gray layer hidden, 
If you paint with black, it darkens your image. Paint with white, and it lightens your image. So it's very, very straightforward to do. Now, obviously, those effects were too much. So I go in, I select my brush. I'm going to go with a, uh, a very, very soft brush, but a, a reasonable size at the moment, maybe this sort of size. I'm doing this with a mouse. I do also have a, uh, a graphics tablet, which... Um, if I'm doing some dodging and burning work, can often be uh, very helpful. But a mouse should be fine for what I'm doing for now. But crucially, you don't want to do your dodging and burning at 100% opacity. That's when you get a very, very strong effect. I tend to bring it down to about 17% and also the flow down to about 15. Now, that just means that when you're applying it, you get a very, very subtle effect, which is exactly what you want. That way you can just paint it in exactly where you want. And what I want is to basically follow where the light is already hitting it, following those textures on the horse's face, the way that the metal curves around to show its form. We want to emphasize that form with the dodge and burn tool. So let's bring it around here, a little bit around here. And I'm going to follow it down here over the shadow a bit. There's really no right or wrong way to do dodging and burning. It's very much experimental effect. Go in, paint around, see what you can get. I mean, yes, of course, you can overdo it massively and things can look very, very weird, but uh, you'll tend to know when you're going that far with things. I'm going to zoom right in on the eye much closer. As you can see, the focus was maybe a little bit closer on the horse's face. The eye is a little bit soft, but that's okay. Make a much smaller brush size, and we're going to paint in a little bit more around the eye, just brighten it up, make it stand out a little bit more. Now if we just flick that on and off there, and zoom out, go on and off, we can just see the difference that that's already making, that one small tool is already starting to really carve out those features on the horse a lot more. It's making it stand out from its background, giving it much more contrast, just making it look much more lifelike. But that's just one bit of dodging and burning with the lightning. Now we need to go in and press X to swap our foreground and background colors, bring our brush tool back up, larger size again, and we are going to paint in with the darkening tool. And that's just going to emphasize these shadows around here. And again, you really don't want to go overboard. Around here a little bit. And then down here. Again, we'll flip that on and off. Suddenly, like this metal seems to have a lot more curve to it. It just pops off the off the page a lot more. Um, I'm going to zoom out, make it fit on screen, and I'm going to do a little bit of extra dodging and burning with a much, much bigger brush uh, to our sky. Paint in some of that darkness. Okay, maybe a little bit smaller brush on here, around here just to give that sky a little bit more mood. Okay, that was a bit much. Let's do a larger brush. Oops, not Lightroom. Let's go back into Photoshop. Thank you. Uh, drop our opacity down so it applies even less. And we're going to go like this on this sky around here. And around here. Swap around again to lighten. We're going to lighten a bit here and here. And then some of the clouds just to again carve out that cloud detail. Season to taste, basically. But there we go. That is our dodge and burn layer. It is, a, in all honesty, a little bit overdone. It's a little bit too much. Now I'm looking at it, and I'm flicking on and off. It's a little bit obvious. So we're going to just bring that opacity down somewhere around 70%, I think, just taking the edge off it. So you just don't want it being too much. And I think that really is bordering on too much. I might even bring it down to 60 Maybe 65. I think that's a little bit better. 
Um, in terms of the main edits I'd want to actually do on this, that's pretty much um, it. I'm, I'm really happy with how this looks. The head really stands out uh, against the background. Um, I think that looks great. Um, this is basically kind of where we've got to. And if we just go all the way back and have a look at our main background layer, it was fine as it was, but it was quite bright and vibrant and um, I don't think had the mood and drama that we were looking for. But by adding in those extra elements, the levels, and certainly the dodge and burning, it's really brought a lot more drama and mood to this shot. And I think black and white works really well because it just emphasizes those lovely curves in the metal and the detail on the uh, on the horse's head. Uh, so I'm really pleased with this. So I'm going to press Command S and save it. And that will take it back over into Lightroom. And here we are. Uh, and yeah, if we just have a little look, everything looks really good. Mm. Just notice, just here, just here, tiny little what looks like might be a dust spot. It's going to bug me. Let's get rid of that. And it's gone. Okay. Um, yeah, that's basically as much as I would want to do. And once it's back in um, uh, in Lightroom is when I might add a little bit of uh, a little bit of sharpening. Just have a look, go in a bit. Um, I don't think it's made any difference whatsoever, actually. That's fine. Um, it's also where I would play and see whether I would want to do any kind of vigne add a vignette. Something that I always find is worth doing last, because if you applied it in Lightroom, then took it over to Photoshop, you'd be affecting that vignette and there'd be no way of controlling it once it's in there. So it's always best to leave things like that to absolutely the last thing you do. I actually think it does work a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to bring in one in minus, minus 15. Just turn that on and off. Yeah, it just helps darken those edges a little bit on around here, draws the attention a bit more to the horse's head in the middle. Um, and that's it for this shot. That's everything that I'd want to do. I'm really pleased with how it looks. Tons of drama, tons of mood, exactly what we wanted. Um, but those are the same techniques and tools that I would use to do the same things to all of these images. Uh, again, mostly it's about darkening it down and then bringing back a lot of that detail using the levels and using the dodging and burning. If you use a dodge and burn tool right, then you can get some really, really interesting effects. And I think particularly with black and white photography, when you want to get that moody atmospheric look, they're an amazing tool to play around with. And you can do that in Lightroom if you don't have uh, Photoshop. You can just bring in a, a new adjustment brush um, and you can just do one, which is uh, upping the exposure. Um, usually I would I'd, uh, advise really bringing down the, uh, the flow and the density so that you can just paint it on in small areas and just build it up exactly like we did in Photoshop. Uh, as you see, you can, has that done anything at all? Oh, it has, it is doing, but it's very subtle. So bring that up and I uh, to plus four in the exposure and a little bit more flow. And as you see, you can do the exact same thing, painting it in, just doing this very, very rough version just to, just to show that you can do it here as well. Uh, and then you can literally just bring in a new one, go the other way, uh, the other settings should still be the same, and then darken down some of those shadows as well. Let's just bring up the flow so we can see a little easier. Um, maybe the density a bit, which I think is the same as the opacity. Yeah, darken down some of those. And if we just flip that on and off, yeah, it's again having the, the exact same effect. It's just by selectively painting in some light, some areas, painting in some shadow to others emphasizing the light and shadow that's already there, emphasizing those curves are already there, um, just to help sculpt them out a little bit more. As I say, it is, a f it is an effect that you can easily overdo. That's why I like to do it in Photoshop, because you're working on a new layer. And as I saw, if it looked a little bit too much, you can just dial that layer back down using the opacity slider um, all the way to zero if you don't like it at all. So here's the original file. And if we just do that, this was our shot straight out of camera, which is good in itself. And I might try and do a, a color edit of this as well and see whether I, I prefer it. But I did go to these in with the idea of doing this black and white shot. I wanted this, this drama and mood. And I think you can get that really nicely in black and white. But we've gone from this to this. And I'm really, really pleased with how this looks. 
So thank you so much for joining me in this edit. Uh, hopefully that has been really helpful in seeing how I would go about creating this sort of effect uh, in black and white using Lightroom and Photoshop. If you have enjoyed the video, please, please do hit that like button and definitely please do subscribe if you don't already. It's massively helpful for growing my channel. Uh, and of course you get to see more videos, which hopefully is something that you want uh, you want to see. You can follow me on Instagram as well with at batteryhq if you want to see some more of my photography or you want to reach out and ask any questions. Uh, but I will see you next time.